I have one question for you. What comes into your mind when you think of the word conductors? Well, for one, you might be thinking of a choir conductor who would wave his hands in these kinds of directions just to make sure that the musical in song is playing in the right tune. Or you might be thinking of a bus conductor who would wave his hands like this to passengers and collect payments just to make sure that the system of public transport is operating smoothly. Well, these two are called conductors for a reason, even if they have different purposes, because they keep a system working through the flow of energy. This is Mr. Arias, and this is my lesson today on conductors and insulators. Going back to my previous example, you might be wondering, how does that even relate to physics? Well, conductors, as I said, transfer energy to keep a system going. The musical conductor transfers this energy of a musical rhythm just to keep the choir going in their performance. The bus conductor would facilitate the transfer of payments just to make sure that the public transport system is going smoothly. In physics, you can conduct many forms of things such as heat, electricity, and so on. But the first that we will focus on would be electricity, which are named as such because they are conductors that allow electric current to flow through them. Now, I'm sure you've seen quite a lot of electrical conductors before. I mean, who could not forget this very famous video game wherein water is weak to electricity because it's super effective. But for our topic, perhaps more relevant would be metals, such as copper wires. In this setup that I'm going to show you now, you can see that there is a bulb, a battery, and something connecting them. This something connecting them is a conductor, a copper wire. This allows the flow of current from the battery to the bulb and back. And this loops together to form what you call a circuit. But the wires also beg a question. Why is it that we do not feel a jolt when we touch the wire? Ah! A few moments later. Oops, I forgot to hold it safely here in the stem. And this stem over here, this wire, this wrapping that you see the copper wires wrapped around, this is made of rubber. And rubber now is not a conductor but an insulator. And they wrap around the copper wire to keep us safe from all of the safety hazards that can happen when we come into contact with electric current. Now that you know what conductors and insulators are, you might be wondering, how do you determine which from which? Well, to do this, we do something called a test for conductivity. To do this test, you must cut the current flow, break the circuit in any portion. Now you can see that the light bulb turns off. Now, why is it that it turns off? It's because there is a gap in the circuit. Air that passes through these two exposed portions of the copper wire does not conduct electricity. Now, with our lab activity today, this is what I want you to do. We have many forms of objects that you can put in between this gap and not just air. My challenge for you, I want you to determine which of them are conductors and which are insulators of electricity. Of course, I won't tell you which is which. But I'll leave you to experiment on that because I think it's more fun if you learn that way. So thank you guys for watching and I hope that you all continue to be conductors of scientific knowledge. Bye guys!